Damn All right. It. I'm here with the legendary Dick Weiss. I appreciate the time uh, more than anything. I'm honored, obviously, to speak with one of the best in the business, member of the National Sports Writers Hall of Fame. You know, I, I wanted to begin with Ed Cooley, uh, what he's been able to do, reload this year. You know, what's impressed you most about this year's team and also just his ability, again, to make Providence one of the top destinations yeah. for transfers? You know, it, it, it... I think what's impressed me is the fact that he's a self-made coach, Nathan. I mean, here's a guy who was brought, who was brought up in South Providence, one of nine children, two of his brothers had issues with drugs. Another one was in, um, in prison, a, a, a sister passed away and he ended up leaving, uh, to, to move in with a neighbor uh, who fed him, put him up and, you know, so he really has a great feeling for Providence. And I think it's part, a big part of his success is the fact that they took him in when he had nothing. Now he wants to give back to the city. I mean, I love the fact he's always been a good recruiter, yeah. but I really think that he's ahead of the game, Nathan, in terms of recruiting transfers with the NIL right now. Getting fours and fives in the Big East is not going to be easy, particularly in the Big Eastern cities where the parents all have their hand out uh, because they want money. And if you take a look at his last two years, last year they were 27 and five. They won the Big East regular season. They got to the NCAA Sweet 16. And they did it with seven transfers. This year, his first five scores are all transfers. So he's been so far ahead of the game as far as resourceful recruiting. I mean, I always thought he was a really good recruiter uh, when he was at BC. I thought he got players uh, above the level that he should have had at, at, at Fairfield. And I think he's figuring it out at, at Providence. I mean, you know how crazy that town is if you have a winning team, Nate. I mean, I mean, that building, that, that, that building rocks when, when, when they were playing for a big East championship and Villanova came in there last year, it was a big, big time atmosphere. And uh, I, I think that he's been able to keep it going now. I mean, his, his only problem is going to be, there are five really good teams in this league right now. Um, and I'm not sure whether, uh, uh, they won't beat up on each other and it could affect seeding. Last year, he got a good seed. He had a four seed and they got to a sweet 16. And frankly, we're pretty competitive with Kansas, which won the national championship this year. Who knows? Absolutely. And you mentioned, you know, the top of the Big East, they, you know, they're going to beat each other up. And obviously <laughs> we, you know, we have a big game coming up, you know, on Wednesday, PC versus uh, Xavier. I don't know how much you've been able to see of Xavier, but you know, what yeah. do you see as obviously a very important game PC on the road uh, playing Sean Miller's Xavier team? I think I think it's hard to win in the Centos Center to begin with. Uh, I think they're going to have to deal with Jack Nungy, who's a legitimate seven footer. Um, I think that I think this that with Fremantle and Nungy, it's a difficult matchup for some of their bigs. But, you know, I mean, Croswell surprised me Sunday. I mean, he had a huge game against Villanova. He had 14, and he really set the tone for their ability to score off that pick-and-roll offense against Villanova, which is a smaller team uh, when Dixon plays the center spot because he's only six, seven and a half. But, you know, I like the way they're playing. I think a lot will do with whether Jared Bynum can continue to get healthy. I mean, he had a monster game, Nathan, uh, uh, Sunday. I mean, 17 and 19 in the last 10 minutes. I mean, took the game over, made that huge one, uh, that huge jump shot off one foot with 24 seconds to play to really kind of put Providence in position to win at Wells Fargo. I mean, Villanova, this is probably Villanova's best shot to beat a team in the top five. I mean, because they're not the best team in the league. They're probably only of the sixth best talent in the, in the league, but Providence weathered the storm. And I talked to Ed afterwards. He seemed pretty happy about the way that they were able to get it done with their depth. It's the one thing that they can offer that not a lot of teams have. I think Creighton has got depth. I think they have depth. And I think that's a huge plus for them whenever they go on the road definitely definitely 
Um, perfect. That's perfect because Twitter only allows me to do 10 minutes. So that's great. Oh, um, I'm sorry. No, 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 <laughs> I no. Figure I I figure I'd just keep talking so it would make it easier That's, for you. I, I bring people on for you to talk, not me. That's perfect. No, that was beyond, <laughs> trust me. You're, I, no one wants to hear me talk. I know that. Um, no, that's great. And then, so maybe, maybe could I ask about Rhode Island, just a general question about obviously having a new coach. What, what is a sufficient amount of time to start seeing, you know, a, you know, an Archie Miller team, you know, develop in a way. Does that make sense? You know? Yeah, if I, you know, no, look, look, Archie Miller was very successful at Dayton. I think that was a very good level for him. I think he never really quite grasped Indiana, but I'm happy he's back in coaching. I think it was, a, frankly, a steal for URI to get a coach who actually understands the league and has been successful in it in terms of getting back to the NCAA tournament. Look, Everybody looks at Rhode Island now and sees where they are, but it's a program with history. They had history in the eighties. They had history in the nineties. I mean, they've had good coaches. I think Jim Herrick, Al Skinner were very good coaches. Tom Benders was, was a very good coach. So you can make it happen there. Um, I think Rhode Island can support two division one programs. And if URI is good, I mean, they'll fill the Ryan center. I mean, I, I think I, I honestly believe that. I don't know it's fair to judge him on a first year. Um, I think that we need to wait till we see the body of work at the end of the season and see if the players have gotten better because you basically inherit your first team. It doesn't matter what you do. And look, I do believe this. I believe you can get healthy quickly with the transfer portal. It's not like you have to recruit fours and fives and let them grow up in the system uh and it's not like it's not like these schools are going to get those kids anymore but they are going to get experienced players from bigger conferences who want more playing time and are going to look at rhode island as a good possibility i mean the miller look archie miller's dad was a great high school coach at blackhawk sean i think is doing a sensational job at Xavier this year. So it's it's in the family blood. And I, I'm hoping for our, for Archie's sake that it just takes a little time. I'm, I, I, have a, I have a fair amount of confidence with, with him because I think he has history and I think he has pedigree. Absolutely. No, I agree. And I agree with you too that, you know, when you bring in a school like you or I bringing in a name like Archie Miller, you no longer have to wait for that four or five years necessarily. It can be expedited hope, a little I bit. I hope you're right. With the I hope you're right about that because the league is, I, first of all, I don't think the league is what it has been in the past. I think we may be dealing with a one bid league right now, but the league is really fluid. I mean, anything you can move into the top five in two or three years yep. if you get the right combination of kids. I mean, anything can happen. I mean, look, Fordham's 17 and four. Yeah. I mean, who oh, would have no. guessed that? There's a team that couldn't even make uh, the tournament a few years back. Yep. No, absolutely. Yeah, definitely a down year for the A-10. But I feel like this year, a lot of new coaches have been brought in. And, you know, I know this right. year's rough, but I could see two or three years from now it being back to maybe a three-bid league. You know, it has that well, opportunity. Yeah the, yeah, the one thing I really like about this league is they're, they, they do very resource. The teams at the top do very resourceful recruiting. Yeah. I mean, my biggest fear in this league, players play well and it doesn't become a destination. And teams like Bonnie's lose all five starters. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that concerns me about the league. You're going to have to make sure that you constantly re-recruit your roster so you have kids who can develop within the roster. You don't want a kid to have a magic year and then suddenly transfer to Arkansas. Yep. No, definitely. No, I agree. Well, hoping for the best. And, um, again, thank you so much for the time. I, I greatly hey, no, it's it. It's great. How, uh, how are you? Uh, how's your project going? It's good. It's going well. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those 